Rescue Mewen, moving. HQ, move on to the target. Flare reloading. I lost visual. One cap. Oh, see, they told us to move on to the target, and they're still shooting. This is why I want to move on the target. I thought we were supposed to flank and pick you up from the side. We almost got shot by our own guys. Did you tell us to move on the target? You're still shooting at us. Team 1, 360 on the target. East. Or west? Southeast. Mancaster South. South, southeast. Platoon green. Two green. Three green. Four green. Well, five green. You're four. Pick a number, goddammit, and stick with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh. Five men. Alright, four green. Five green. All green. Alright, index bringing in. School through. Okay, I'm not gonna run my mouth this time. We're gonna do something called sustains and improves. If anyone here's actually been in the army, they probably know what I'm talking about. Um, so we're gonna start a actual format for. AARs. First I'm going to call on somebody, team leader, is going to say who, what was supposed to happen, and we'll, they're going to say what actually happened, and we're going to call on a couple people for some sustains, meaning what we did good and keep, should keep doing, and, what we sh and I'm going to call on some people for improves, what we did bad and what we should improve. Alright, so Mueller, what was supposed to happen? We have to uh, pin and flank you, and we pinned and flanked you. Okay. Uh, what did that involve? Team 1 being the base of fire and putting fire on you, and Team 1 moving to flank, and then moving on to you. Okay. Uh, did that happen? Yep. Okay. Um, Phillips, give me an improve. Well, I couldn't hear, hear any communications that was going on, but when... Uh uh, Barnes and I got into position. We were just kind of hanging out, wondering what to do next. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have you on radio. I tried calling over radio to Martins to move. Okay. No, I heard. I heard you t told me to move, but you guys were still shooting at the target at the time, and I was afraid to move. And then we got to Rent House. We were still taking fire. I was like, we're getting friendly fired now. I got an improvement. Okay. Cool. Uh. Forbidding the use of smoke by the, but well, by both teams moving. Okay, I like it, very very good, and that was an improvement I had. Tell me why. Well, miss the visibility. We could have shot our moving team. Good. <laughs> right close. All right, give me sustain, hopefully. What's this name? It's this name. Uh, good maneuverability by the HQ element to get to the flank and then take out the target from the flank and then move in to confirm the kill. Okay. Does anybody have any sustains or improves that I haven't called on or haven't been mentioned? Yeah, shall we just keep firing uh, until, like, team leader says cease fire? 
Yeah, you do. Or, okay. Your very first, once you take fire, you want to gain that fire superiority. That means you want a lot of outgoing fire. After that initial fire superiority, once you get their heads down initially, then you can start choosing the targets. So basically, say you're in a field that's not like this, and there's a bunch of bushes and stuff, and you hear some gunshots coming from a distance, probably more than 200 yards, in a certain direction. If you don't see that target, which probably most people are not going to see the target, if you do, that's great. But if you don't see where those shots came from, that initial burst of fire is to get heads down. And so what that means is you shoot at every bush at a, that would be a reasonable target, where a reasonable target or a piece of cover that an enemy might have, the enemy that shot at you might have been in, to get their head down. After that initial five seconds of gaining fire superiority, then you can start searching for targets and actually trying to suppress a target. So on the saw, that might mean doing die motherfucker die, die motherfucker die, die motherfucker die in, in your burst. And on your M4, that might be a pop, pop, pop. But if you don't have a target, you don't have to be putting out tons and tons of fire. Just every once in a while, put a couple rounds at a likely enemy position if you don't see an enemy. And if you're not taking any, before, any fire anymore, the enemy might be dead, they might be bugging out, they might just be suppressed. So but you can slacken up your fire a little bit and just be, use common sense with it. I mean, if they're not shooting at you, they're probably suppressed. You want to keep them suppressed. So keep putting fire on an enemy location, but you don't need to be going through all of your ammo in 30 seconds. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Also, when you see that enemy target die or go down, so in our trainings, that's me putting my gun down, that means the enemy target is dead. Now, there might be more enemy targets, so it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to stop firing, but if your target just died and you don't see any more, it's probably, it's reasonable to slack in your fire again. Anything else anybody saw? Like how the HQ team moved behind the barrier. Did they move behind the barrier? I think no, we moved going. along it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know if the Barry was out of bounds or not of the exercise. So I was like, I'm just it wasn't. And if you had used it, it would have been great. If you had not, whatever, it's fine. Anything else? Good. Um, one thing I noticed when the HQ was moving, it might have been because of smoke. But while the HQ was moving onto the target, there was still a lot of fire coming in onto the target. There's a lot of chance for blue on blue there. So be careful with that. Once you order your team to move on to the target target, make sure that you're um, consciously thinking, okay, I've got a team moving into the area I'm shooting at right now. Maybe I should tell my team to slacken their fire or stop firing or check fire. Um, once HQ got to me, um, I was dead. Base fire stopped firing. That was fine. Um, then HQ both turned and looked at the team um, that was shooting. That area is the safest area because you have friendlies in that direction. You want to be looking in any other direction when you're setting up your initial security. Granted, there were only two of you. Any comments from anyone else?